Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to make rolled paper tubes or how to wrap something around a tube in a spiral shape to make something like this. Uh, toilet paper tubes, uh, cardboard, any sort of cardboard tube pretty much is made this way. But there's also lots of things uh, made out of metal this way. There are spiral round pipes as well and everything. The reason I wanted to make this was so that I could make my own custom body tubes and motor mounts for my model rockets. But it also occurred to me that there's many other times that I've wanted to be able to do this. Um, occasionally I want to wrap duct tape around a pipe. Or you might want to fiberglass around a pipe. Anyway, I'm going to show you the math behind this and show you how we do this. It's actually not that hard, so stay tuned. So here I've got my prototype pipe that I made yesterday. It's six layers of paper held together with glue stick glue. If we look at a tube from the side, it's going to look like this. You've got your spirals going around it. It's got some height. It's got some diameter. Or in this case, I mean, it's just width here, but obviously it's a diameter. So let's say the case you had no, um, you want to wrap a pipe. Let's say you're going to wrap a pipe with duct tape. Let's say your pipe's two inches, and let's say your duct tape's about two inches, which is generally pretty close. And let's say you want to wrap a pipe that's, oh, I don't know, 12 inches long. So, I mean, you can kind of envision that spiral, but the problem becomes, well, gosh, at what angle do I actually need to start wrapping this such that every successive layer of tape contacts every other layer? We're doing this without any overlap because we want a nice, smooth surface. So we want perfect butt joints on our adjacent uh, wraps. So you might want to know what's my helix angle going to be and what's the pitch between my two pieces. That'll help you uh, lay out your initial few spirals to get it wrapped right. And it'll also tell you then how much material you're going to need. Do you have enough duct tape to wrap this pipe? I don't know. We're going to find out. So if we just consider this bottom section here, we're going to start our helix. We're going to go around this way. So into the board first, come around, back around, and out this way. So I drew a line here to represent our strip width. Since the width is measured perpendicular to the strip, this also has to be a right triangle, so I drew that in there. Well, now similarly, we can transfer this theta over to here. So we know this angle here is also theta. Now, we don't know what it is yet, but we do know that it is also theta. So I really probably should have done that one in brown. We're looking at this upside down the way you normally look at it, but you can see here that what we have is a hypotenuse. We have an angle and an opposite. Well, that involves sines. So we're going to use sines to get that. Typically, you would write something like this. Your sine of theta is equal to your opposite over your hypotenuse. Well, how about that? Now we know everything we need to solve for theta. It's simply going to be the arc sine of this. 18.6 degrees. Not too hard as you can see, it's really just a bunch of trigonometry. So if you paid attention to your Sokotoas back then, you're really not going to have any trouble here. It's just kind of flipping stuff and looking at it a little bit differently, but it's really not that tough. Okay, great. Well, we know our helix angle now, so I can make you blue. It's 18.6 degrees. This is also 18.6 degrees. Well, now we certainly know more than we need to find our pitch. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, or rise over run. Well, tangent of theta, we know theta is 18.6, so we can just doodle that in there. We know what our adjacent, because this is the side that is adjacent to our angle, is pi d. Pi d, and so we just need to solve for this. So, tangent of 18.6 times pi d is equal to p, or our pitch, which is the opposite side that we're trying to solve for right there. So you run all this through your calculator, I can't do it in my head, and you end up with a pitch of 2.11 inches. As you can see, that one wasn't all that hard either, just moving stuff around. A little bit of algebra and a little bit of trigonometry. This is great and all, we can't stop there because we got one more thing to figure out. 
how much material do you need to start with to wrap all this around that way? Well, I'm going to show you how we're going to figure it out. So when you cut a strip to wrap around something, odds are it's going to be a rectangular shape. Well, if you go to wrap a rectangular shape around spiral like this, you're going to have ends hanging off. And you've got to account for this, and this is the, kind of the tricky part. If you actually unwrap a cardboard tube, toilet paper, paper towel, anything like that, wrapping paper tube, you'll notice that the spirals are actually parallelograms, with these sections here being waste. Well, you have to account for that because you can't measure your length diagonally. So what we got to do is figure out what's the total length of our helix plus some. Well, the length of the helix really isn't all that tough. We come back to our triangle here, we know everything that we need to know to figure out what this hypotenuse is for one helix. Simple enough, we can use Pythagorean's theorem now that we know everything else. So you do all the math, you get the square root of this squared plus this squared ends up being 6.62 inches. Okay, great. Well, we know the length of our total tube. We know what the pitch is, which is, you know, similar to wavelength, anything like that. Well, if you know the total length, you know the pitch, you can figure out how many times you have to go around by just simply dividing the two. Height was 12 inches. Our pitch from our last calculation was 2.11. So we simply divide 12 over 2.11 and we have a total wrap count of 5.68. So from the very start, from this point right here, or right here below the red line on the bottom, we're going to go around 5.68 times. Well, what does that tell us? It tells us that since we're going to go around 5.68 times, we're going to have 5.68 of these right here. Because remember, the hypotenuse of this triangle represents the distance around the backside and up to the point directly above our starting point on the helix. So we're going to take this 6.62 times 5.68 to get our helix length. But then there's the plus sum. So let's go ahead and do this easy part first. 30.68. That's not a whole lot of wrap. That's easily, that's just a couple turns around a roll of duct tape. Not, not bad at all. But what about that plus sum? Well, here's the, here's the deal. When you start off, you're measuring from the bottom of the strip. You're measuring, say, from here. You have to measure from here, because this line here represents the bottom of your tube. You can't measure from here, because then that first wrap on your tube will have all this area exposed. So you've got to cut this part off. Well, okay, that's not a problem. We'll measure from this corner then, okay? Rather than measure from here, we'll measure from here. That makes sense. Well, you can't change the edge you measure from, or else your measurement won't come out right. So you've got to continue your measurement all the way across. So, you get to here. Uh-oh, that's where the top of your tube's going to be. Well, here's your plus sum, right there. This is the waste. How do you calculate how much waste that is? It's actually not that hard. We've got the hypotenuse here. We've got our theta. So what we want is this adjacent side. Well, what relationship is hypotenuse over adjacent? Well, that's the cosine relationship. What this all comes out to be is 5.955. Let's call that 31. 31 plus 6. You need 37 inches of duct tape wrapped at 18.6 degrees with a pitch of 2.11 inches between spirals in order to cover this 2 inch diameter 12 inch pipe. I hope this tutorial walked you through this. There's a couple other cases where you might know a few other things. You only need to know uh, three different parameters to make all this work. But in a different video I'm going to show you how we do that. Now that you understand kind of the math behind this, it definitely gets a lot simpler, I promise. But thanks for watching, I really appreciate it.